This week on Business Mike, the business of magazines. My guest today is Irene Machitende. She's the founder and managing director of The African Secrets Magazine, a biannual magazine showcasing the hidden gems and cultures from the African continent. In this episode, Irene and Lynette share the pros and cons of running a magazine business, including tips on how to get sponsors while starting out and the best ways to keep your magazine relevant and grow your audience. All this and more next on Business Mike. You're listening to the Business Mike podcast. Amazing interviews with inspiring entrepreneurs. For more amazing interviews, go to www.businessmike.com or download our podcast every Monday from Pod Africa. Hello and welcome to another episode of Business Mike. My name is Daudi Mugabe and joining me today are the team from African Secrets, Irene and uh, Lynette. Could you just introduce yourselves and uh, tell us a bit about yourselves and what you do? Okay, my name is Irene Najitende Kakonge and I happen to be the founder of the African Secrets magazine as well as a writer. I'm, among, I'm on the writing team, I'm on the creative team. I'm everywhere though. I'm not the main person there. I just put myself there. <laughs> Hi, my name is Lynette Nakamanya, and I'm in the production and the directing team. I'm among the people who are in the, who does this and operations management. As I ask everybody on this uh, podcast, how did you, or what is it that prompted you to start uh, a magazine, number one in this particular field, and number two, a magazine itself, because People have the perception that magazines are fading out these days with, you know, this whole digital thing coming along. Print is no longer a medium that is as popular as the digital side. So why did you decide to do a magazine and why particularly something to do with African? Okay, for a start, I'm going to start with why I decided to do a magazine. And yeah, people are saying that print is fading out. That is very true. Yeah, print may be fading out, but I think it... it uh it's what your publishing really matters, yeah? I'm trying to do something with tourism and culture plus lifestyle. There's no blog you're going to open. Okay, you may find a blog that you might open that has all these things, but then they don't talk about them extensively like we do in the African Secrets magazine. And another thing, uh, really, a magazine is, uh, is the best, like... Uh, way of advertising or putting across things, like different things, you know? Because... One one thing for sure is people like magazines, however much there is digital or whatever and everything. People like magazines. You can't sit in a spa and you see a magazine and you fail to touch it. You just can't. You know, it is how it attracts the eye. You're going to have your phone for the rest of the day, but then you're going to leave this magazine behind. So you, you really want to see what, what's in the magazine. Yeah, so there's no way you're going to go in a plane and they're going to give you a magazine and you're like, I'm not going to look at it. Let me just be on my phone. There is practically no way, yeah? Because... It keeps b- people busy and it keeps people waiting, maybe in the, in, the, in the offices in case they're waiting for a meeting. They'll leave their phones and get a magazine because, you know, they attract, you know, their eye, they, they pick the attention of the eye very quickly. Yeah, so that's why I chose a magazine. Though we're also online, so uh, our, our website is www.africansecrets.com. So people that can't access the magazine usually go and find some things online, but you don't put everything there because, you know, we want people to buy the hard copy. Yeah. And another thing why we chose a culture, a tourism, and a little lifestyle is, okay, it's true that Africans don't like so much, are not so proud of their cultures. That's very true. Like they, are, they, they, they think uh, being westernized is cool. Eh? They think it's very cool. So we know that, but we are trying to restore our cultures. Fine, we may want to be westernized and look like those people, but we are not, yeah? So what we're trying to do is uh, we, bring, uh, we want to bring back a little something about culture, like if we really can, yeah? So we, uh, we get uh, small, small things from different cultures, and then you write about them extensively. These are the secrets. That's why I call it African secrets. Now, like, you can find the baganda and the drum. You know, you just know the drum. You don't know what's behind the drum. I mean, what is this, is this drum used for? When is it used? And, you know, these are things we are trying to do to inform the people more about our cultures. We don't want our cultures to just fade like that and there's nothing that has been written about them. You know, there's a culture called the Musi in the new edition. The Musi are, are on the border of uh, South Sudan and Ethiopia. This is a culture that 
I myself, it, it, it intrigues me. I mean, it's so weird how they do their things, you know, but they believe it's culture. It's still very virgin, and it's so sad that this culture is going to be wiped away because there's going to be a dam that's going to be built there, you know. So these are cultures that we may never hear about again, but they existed. There's a time that we reach and our grand, great, 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 great grandchildren children don't know where we held from, you know. So a magazine is something that I know will be there and be there and be there. And even if someone sees it after 10 years, the information will be new to that person in their eyes, you know. It doesn't matter when you wrote it, when or when, but the information will be new. So really, I, I think that writing about culture is something that's going to be uh, good and will be, can be used for referrals and you know, keeping our history. And then tourism is because we want to, you know, promote the tourism in Uganda. Uh, tourism brings in a lot of money in Uganda, yeah? But kind of, we don't know that kind of tourism we want. We just want to promote uh, domestic tourism and, and, and uh, international tourism, like people coming from abroad. So we're trying to distribute the magazines outside Uganda. And then we put lifestyle because we don't want the thing to be so boring. Yeah. We thought that uh, putting something uh, that brings a little life to the magazine would really somehow make sense. So we have a little fashion, and then uh, we have a little something about the youth that we're going to, to just bring in, you know, to inspire the youth. And then um, food, Dika, yeah. Actually, before we started recording the interview, I was sharing with you some of the challenges people have when they start a blog or a podcast like myself. Sometimes there's a certain point you reach where by coming up with new content or that creativity to keep it going becomes a challenge. So how often do you release the magazine and uh, how big is your team and how often do you, or rather, how do you go about keeping it fresh in terms of finding new and cool stuff to keep it keep in the magazine? Okay, first of all, we publish only twice a year because we know our information is really exclusive. We, we, we don't want to over dilute it, so it's twice a year. And when an issue comes out, we, we really have given the best, yeah? So um, usually we, 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 you ask uh, why we, how we, we, we keep on bringing fresh stuff. Right? We have enough time to look for things, you know, to put in the new edition. And then another thing, um, usually we have a temporary team and then a permanent team. So most of the writers are, are temporary, yeah? Because, you know, you can't keep the same writers. It would be a lot of monotonous you know and then uh, the graphics designers usually we hire like for four issues and then we can change because still the design can become monotonous so the permanent team who are the maybe editors copy editors operations manager business whatever all those people are like seven the permanent the permanent team but then the rest of the people just chip in and then we can change them as time goes on yeah and what, what's the one thing that you've discovered doing magazines that maybe people who just pick them up take for granted? Is there anything that goes into the process that someone might actually not know, something maybe you've done in the past? Yeah, like while doing magazines, there are some small things that people do not notice, like the texture of the paper and the material, you know, and the smoothness, you know. Well, before, when I used to run through different magazines, I never felt the difference and the simplicity that um, different magazines weighed. But when I went into production and operations, I learned that the smoother the material, the paper, the more expensive it costs, you know, which came, you know, su as a surprise to me. Because I thought maybe a smooth paper would be cheaper since it's smooth, you know, you can easily tear. But in the magazine and publication industry, it's different. What are the, the moments that you've had here that uh, made this venture worth it? Some of the things that I've experienced so far that have kept you going and uh, made this whole experience worthwhile? Okay, we, we experienced a lot of things. Uh, sometime we, we, did that, uh, we, we did that logo together, like the wood, bringing together the wood, making an African logo with the Chitenji. So those are... And then we do a little, we did a little art pieces, you know, as a, as a team that keep, keeps us going. And apart from the work, you know, so, and then another thing, whenever we have like photo shoots, we travel like a team, maybe, uh, like in the last edition, we traveled to Pineapple Bay, like the whole team, like 11 people. And it was so fun on a yacht. The yacht was only for us, you know, so it was so fun and, Usually those are the things we do, but whenever we are doing those things, we are actually gathering content indirectly for the next issue, yeah. 
obviously with every business there are ups and then there are downs so what are some of the challenges uh, in the magazine industry in particular say for example someone wants to get into this business what are some of the things they need to prepare for that will be challenging okay the very first thing is you have to be ready to like know how to pitch to people and you know bring people on board because magazine with magazines money doesn't come with sales yeah it comes with advertisements and remember when you're just starting no one has to really put their brand in your magazine because it's just starting so that's the biggest challenge yeah and then the other thing is uh printing you have to make sure you have a very good quality okay they may be good printers at nasa but I, i made a lot of mistakes when i was just starting yeah so my quality wasn't really good and Somehow, when you present that uh, half-baked quality stuff to people, they don't really, really want to associate with you, yeah, because they think you you don't have good quality, yeah. So, what those people who would like to uh, maybe go into magazine business should consider first is, can you try to like lobby some people to come on board, you know, like for to 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 cater for their first costs, and if they can't, you can incur your costs because you know. everything and if you love something you have to be ready to incur some costs and then another thing they should consider is of uh, taking their own pictures because you know you can have pictures in the magazine that are not yours and the magazine the, the pictures picture quality is not nice because you know they're pixelated and you may get sued you know and then another thing graphics designer once the pictures and the graphics designer are good plus the printery you're good to go and plus when you have adverts Obviously you've mentioned that um, you need to have that selling skill or that ability to bring people on board. Now looking at it from the other side, what are some of the things that you've discovered that the people who uh potential advertisers look for in a magazine? Like what have you discovered? What are they looking out for because sometimes you may have an amazing magazine, the pictures are fantastic, everything is good, but for one reason or another it's just not appealing to them. Maybe it's the content. So, from your experience, what is it that those guys want in a magazine that they're willing to pay for? Most times really what these people are willing to pay for is mileage. They don't really care about the content because at the end of the day if the content really sells and it's it's reaching numbers, that's all they mind about. Yeah? Someone will tell you that You know me I've been I've not seen this ma- you, okay I, like I've really tried to distribute my magazine but of course I've not distributed to ev- where, everywhere you know so we find a person telling you I've not seen this magazine in my spa where they do my hair from and you're like do I know your spa really you know so it's kind of distribution is kind of hard you can't reach everyone but if you can try to reach most people then you do that because it's mileage that they look at but then doesn't that again counter the initial argument of um bringing on people in the beginning because let's say we've just started a magazine now um obviously it's not going to be in every salon because it's it's just released now but at the same time we need some money to, you know to give us that mileage how then do you convince them given the fact that you've not been around for a long time a friend of mine once told me that uh, he approached one of the big advertisers a telecom company and they told him we really love your magazine but first do it for two years then come back because if you can stay in business for two years you've proven to us that you're worth someone we can pay you for a year and we know you know we'll be safe because we've had bad experiences where people come with amazing magazines and you know we pay for a year and four five months later they close for one reason or another so that's one of the challenges that people have in this industry and from your perspective i just wanted to know that initial thing there you're not known you're just starting how do you convince these people okay the initial thing you just have to be wise you just have to be wise you just have to be strategic yeah in your ma- in your first magazine if you want to make money out of it you go to the owner of freedom city let's say because this is the, is the person i went to and should you know what you 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 inspire very many people you know please can i talk about you in my magazine and usually people are open to to really uh interviews you know because they also want their brand to be out there as long as you're not charging them so you put people that are influential in your magazine for free and then invite them on the launch trust me they're going to buy the magazine expensively than they would buy an advert yeah so that's what i did for me so i think it just needs for someone to you know use their brains i used uh, uh mr amos wekesa and he really he was like my first cover and he really helped me with you know Uh, talking about my magazine and you know who Amos is so 
literally people came on board and like hey, if Amos was in this magazine that means the magazine is good you know he was so kind to me yeah. so i think it just it just the, the people that you 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 try to you know write about and the kind of content matters in the first place because these are the people that are going to push you yeah because it's very hard to just go into someone's office and tell them buy an advert in my first edition but you can write about them and in the next editions they can advertise and with that edition they would like to buy it expensively you know and they would like to call more people or to tell more people about the magazine because they are in it and that will give you mileage well what issues do you have out now and uh, what can we expect to find in the the latest uh, issue of the african secrets magazine um so far we, i told you we published twice yeah we've been in the market for two years now now this is our fourth edition yeah uh, uh the fourth edition this year it's the last edition of this year and there's a lot to find you know i'll, I'll first read for you the first uh, the the stories you flagged and a lifestyle we had in two ugandas white sand barbados pineapple bay oh my god if you haven't been to pineapple bay then i don't know if you don't know pineapple bay that's in uganda this nice place with white sand you know you should just go about it and probably be there so we wrote about the place uh we had a trip there so we wrote about the place and then um secrets it's you know it's african secrets yeah why white men can't get enough of african sex <laughs> Yeah, that's a secret. Yeah. And then that you should find inside when you buy. And then the Musi, the Musi, the people I've told you about, the people from the Omo Valley, yeah. They put uh, uh close to 12 cm plates in their what? In their lips. This is um uh, the lip is en- enlarged ever since you're young. And then as you go, it enlarges, they enlarge it, they keep on enlarging it until a plate of 12 cm can fit there. And that means you're going to get enough dowry. So find out what these people feel about this kind of experience because it's I mean you can't do it I mean and it's beauty to them so find out why they find it beautiful and why they've kept on doing it even up to now I mean this all modernity yeah and then a directory of the we have a, a list of uh, the good hotels in Uganda that you could sleep around in in case you are in Uganda this is mainly for the tourists and the people that like traveling. Yeah, so there's a lot to do with culture and tourism in the current edition and people should really buy it, yeah. Good picture quality, good paper quality and print. Yeah. Final question is uh, if you were stranded on a desert island, what three things would you bring with you? And these three things you can only bring one of each. Um a movie, a book and a song. I would take the secret. The book is called The Secret. This book tells you about the universe i mean the law of attraction yeah i'll take the secret i like i like the book so much and then i'll take a movie i'll take syrup syrup it's called syrup whenever i watch that movie i'm empowered it has very good marketing skills and i just love the song the movie i keep repeating it and repeating it i just can't get enough of it yeah and then a song i would i would want a song that is going to you know put me in the spirit yeah Yeah, any gospel song. <laughs> yeah. Uh since I'm not so much of a movie person, I don't think I would go with a movie. Yes. The book I would go with Who Moved My Cheese. It's a book which which highly highlight, highlights the the need to keep moving, you know, even when you have you feel you have reached to that point when you have everything you need and just don't sit down and relax. Keep moving or at least keep on your toes. Yeah, then maybe a song I would take this uh a jazz song called The Moment. Since it's an instrumental, I feel I would not get tired of the words. You know, it's it's an instrumental. Yeah, so it's called The Moment. Well, thank you so much for your time. Just one more question, especially about the magazine. You mentioned you release it twice a year. Can you just let us know when uh in the year you release it? Now, this was released uh um from uh July to December. Uh, f- from July to January yeah and then the next edition is going to be from February to July yeah so February it's going to be out yeah yeah that's it and it's in Kenya all nakmat stores and it's also in Uganda all nakmat stores taskies capital shoppers our uh, offices um different hotels and and uh, restaurants like cafes um yeah and how can people connect with you on uh, social media website or physical location in case they want to find out more or get in touch okay um 
I didn't I, I forgot to say we are organizing a festival. It's going to be called the African Secrets Festival. There is going to be a lot of beverage testing from different cultures. You know the Banyankole have the Ishawe. Is it Ishawe? And then and then uh Bushera, you know. The the Itasots have a join so this Baganda we have Mwenge and Mubisi. So there's going to be a lot of beverage testing, uh food testing like um we we're going to invite uh, different hotels and then there's going to be a lot of you know culture different clusters from different region re- regions yeah and then we're also going to have uh, a lot of uh, di- uh, african designers showcasing their stuff and you know craft craft people who make crafts anything to do with african africanism you know it's going to be called the african secrets festival in may yeah so come one come all and then uh, you had asked me about oh yeah our web, uh, our social media handle on facebook is uh african secrets magazine and festival and then on instagram it's african secrets magazine then you can email us at info info at the african secrets.com or african secrets 38 at gmail that's like direct to my phone and then or any other person's phone and then um you can also find us on our email www.theafricansecrets.com Yeah. On our offices are at Equatorial Mall, room 657. Well, thank you so much, uh, Irene, Lynette. Thank you so much for your time and all the insight into the magazine industry and African Secrets. We definitely wish you the very best in your venture. Thanks for listening to the Business Mike podcast. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you'd like to listen to more episodes just like this one, simply go to businessmike.com. I would love to hear from you. So if you've got any questions or feedback, you can reach me on Twitter at Daudi Mugabe, on Facebook at Business Mike, or email that's Daudi at businessmike.com. Don't forget, we have a brand new episode every Monday. And until then, take care.